Hey guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. In this tutorial, we're gonna look at using proxy footage to speed up your workflow in Adobe Premiere Pro. So here we are, we've opened a new project in Premiere Pro, and this project's completely blank. I have nothing in it right now. So the idea of using proxy footage is basically you have a high quality uh, video clip, and it really bogs down your computer as you're editing with it. I'll go ahead and pull up a finder window. I've got two folders set up currently, and those two folders are a high quality folder and a low quality folder. Let me pull this up so you can see it a little better. There we go. So I've got HQ for high quality, LQ for low quality, and inside of each, notice I have three clips. In the high quality folder, those three clips are a half gig or more a piece. In the low quality, same exact clips, they're about 60 meg, 75 meg, 62 meg, much more manageable for your computer. Now, if you want to know how I made those clips, I created an Adobe Media Encoder tutorial. I'll put a card up there. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, there's also an After Effects proxy tutorial that I've made. So all of these tutorials are like companions of one another. If you want to know the whole gamut of how I'm using these proxy footage, creating proxy footage uh, to speed up workflow. But in this one, we're going to talk about Premiere Pro. So I just wanted you to see these are the two folders that we have set up. So I'm going to minimize those and we'll go back to our Premiere project. First thing I want to do, I'm going to bring in all my high quality footage. So I'm going to go down here. It says import media to start. I can either double click in this gray space there or I can go up to file import and then just navigate to your folder structure where you have your low quality and high quality folders. So from here, all I want to do is import the high quality video clips and I can do that but just by clicking on the folder and that will import all three of the clips that are inside there and actually I believe it'll set it up in a folder structure or bin structure down here already. So I can drop this down and you see there's my three clips. Now these are the three high quality clips. So these are the ones that are going to really bog down the system as we get into making a lot of edits and cuts and throwing effects on them and creating all sorts of different layers in our timeline. So what I want to do is go ahead and shift click those three clips. So I want them all selected and then we're going to right click on them and we're going to find proxy. And from here we're going to attach proxies. And because we already have those low quality cl clips created, we uh, all we have to do is select, you can just select the first one here. Notice it has them all loaded. Make sure that relink others automatically is checked. That means that Premiere, once you link one of them, it's gonna be like, hey, I see there's a couple other clips, we'll link those too. Uh, you can use Media Browser to attach files or you don't have to. Notice if I have it unchecked, how the browser window works. It's kind of like that normal uh, Mac browser window or PC browser window. I can hit cancel on that and if I do have it check marked, I just want to show you both ways and I hit attach. That's going to be the Premiere Pro browser window and it's similar. I Personally, I like the other way, but all you have to do is navigate to where those clips are, which would be on my desktop. And once I get there, since I am relinking, just clip one. All I need to do is navigate to that low quality folder, find the clip that I want to use as the proxy, which is this clip one, hit OK, and it's going to link all three of those. And now it looks like it didn't do anything. Well, there's two more things I want you to do. First off, up where it says name, frame rate, and all this stuff, that's the meta metadata stuff that uh, Premiere shows you about all your clips. Right click on that and go to metadata display. From here, there's Premiere Pro Project Met Metadata. I cannot say metadata. All right, drop that down and then scroll way, 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 way down and find proxy and check that. Once you have it checked, hit OK. Now that adds it to this list, but this is like way, 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 way over here. So if you scroll all the way to the end, there's a little proxy. If you want, you can click this and drag it to the front. So we can put it right there next to name and then we can bring this uh, project panel way back over and kind of realign all of our stuff. But you can see now that the proxy is attached. So that's a little indicator that says, okay, the proxy is attached, but we're not done yet. What we need to do up here in our program. So if we, let's say we drag these three clips and we make a new sequence based off of them just by dragging them down to the new uh, file down here. So we got a sequence based on these clips, a bunch of clips of me on a green screen. That's lovely. Uh, but for now, right now, it's still using the high quality footage. So this is like the most important part, you guys. Up in this uh, program or this kind of source window here, there's a little plus icon. It's a button editor. So go to that. And what we want to do is 
find toggle proxies. It's this little icon with these arrows from one clip to the other. Click and drag that down into this uh, panel where all the buttons are, and it's gonna add that button. I'm gonna hit OK from there. And now I have that little button, and I can just click it. And if it's highlighted blue, I'm officially using the proxy footage now instead of the high quality footage. If you toggle it back off, it'll switch back to the high quality. So you'll notice a difference in your workflow when you have this toggled on because now I'm using clips that are like 10% of the size of my other clips. So once again, if you want to know how to create those low quality clips, I have an Adobe Media Encoder tutorial. You can check that out on my channel. Um, make sure, just, just to make sure you're safe, before you render your final output, toggle this off to make sure you're using high quality clips and then render that, that final version. Um, that's it for this tutorial guys. If you learned something new or like this tutorial, make sure you like this video. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.